Located in Sussex County, Delaware, a small unassuming bridge connecting the Woodland Church Road harbors a dark history. Locals avoid this bridge, with some going as far as to label Woodland Church Road as the most haunted street in Delaware. The tragic reason for this bridge's alleged supernatural presence stems from the end of the 19th century. A young woman named Maggie Bloxham was traveling the road by horse and carriage. Unfortunately, as Maggie's carriage passed over the bridge, the wheels were jostled by the uneven grate. The cabin began careening to the side, and young Maggie looked out the side window just as the carriage tipped over. She was decapitated on impact. Half the carriage was swept away by the river's rapids, including her head, while the rest of Maggie's body was left on the bridge surrounded by debris. Adding to the tragedy, Maggie had been pregnant with her first child at the time of her death. Locals claim that her sorrowful spirit still roams the forest surrounding Woodland Church Road. They believe that she cannot move on until she has located both her lost head and the soul of her unborn child. While the records from this period have largely been lost, a tombstone in the local cemetery belongs to a woman named Maggie Bloxham. She lived a relatively short life. Residents warn against disturbing her spirit, but if one wishes to encounter Maggie, there is supposedly one method that guarantees success. First, you must stall your car when crossing the bridge and turn the headlights off. Then you must exit your vehicle and call out to the spirit of Maggie by name. After this, she should hear you, but if she doesn't make her presence known immediately, all you have to do is yell, Maggie, Maggie, I have your baby. Residents allege that claiming to possess her unborn baby will cause the spirit to become incredibly riled up. For a heightened chance of interaction, one resident recommends that prospective visitors come to Maggie's Bridge on the night of the blue moon. Supposedly, a whistling wind will gust through the trees at the utterance of Maggie's name, and regardless of the season, faint flashes will appear in the distance. Those who have observed them liken them to the remote flashes of firefly lights, except not nearly as warm and far more uniform in shape than a group of disconnected bugs. This strange phenomenon is known to locals as the ghost pits. In addition, if one is planning on visiting this allegedly haunted location, another aspect must be considered. Many report that they have experienced inexplicable vehicular failure after stalling on the bridge. A car that may have had no previous issues may suddenly refuse to start. Others have claimed that their vehicle exhibited evidence of a supernatural force acting upon it. These reports include the car rolling despite the engine being off and the car unexpectedly shifting gears. Because of this, locals avoid the area and recommend that visitors steer clear. While there's no shortage of murderous women who have committed atrocious acts against both family and community, there are very few examples of successful female serial killers throughout history. Even fewer have accumulated a legacy as despicable and infamous as Delaware's quick-knifed Patty Cannon. While parts of her life remain enshrouded in mystery, Patty Cannon was a known gang leader and serial killer. She successfully eluded authorities for most of her life and perished in 1829, shortly after her crimes were exposed. Unfortunately, this means that Patty never stood for her trial in Georgetown, Delaware, and the families impacted by her vile acts were deprived of justice. The exact details of her crimes and even her motivations have become muddled with time, but through historical fiction, one can glean a sense of this woman's insidious nature. Perhaps bearing a hereditary curse perpetuating her toward violence, Patty's life began when her father, an English nobleman, fell in love with and married a prostitute. The Cannon family lived comfortably in a Quebec brothel for a time until the visit of a family friend named Alexander Payne. Patty's father feared what would occur if news of his immoral lifestyle reached his family in England. Anxiety overwhelmed his senses until the man had no choice but to act. In the dead of night, he silently crept into Alexander's bedroom 
brandishing an axe. He brutalized his sleeping friend without hesitation. The following day, authorities arrived at the bloody scene. Patty's father was implicated in the crime and quickly executed. Following the death of her father, Patty and her mother schemed to find a new way of supporting themselves. Patty discovered this in a young wheelwright, whom she successfully seduced into marriage. She then began poisoning her husband until he passed away several pain-filled years later, and she was left alone with his wealth. From this point on, Patty Cannon's business ventures grew more repugnant. She slowly amassed an army of criminals to do her bidding, engaging in all methods of crime, but her notoriety lies in human trafficking. Patty's cohorts described her as beautiful, dark, and very entertaining. On top of this, her lithe body was surprisingly solid and agile. This combination proved to be lethal to her victims. Patty took advantage of the divide between the free North and the enslaved South. She would target the black community of Philadelphia, befriending many under false pretenses. She primarily targeted children who could be easily overpowered. After a level of trust was developed, Patty would lure away those who had fallen for her charm and sell them back into slavery, or worse. She developed a taste for cruelty. Patty enjoyed inspiring fear and showed no hesitation in killing those who resisted her. This was how she was caught in her late 60s to early 70s, when the body of a young boy was unearthed on her property. Patty Cannon's malice is said to transcend her death. Her skull currently resides in an ornate box at the public library in Dover. It is said that her spirit still roams the area, perhaps in search of another unsuspecting victim. Fort Delaware possesses a storied past. It is a somewhat isolated location, tactically constructed upon Pea Patch Island in the middle of the Delaware River. Because it's difficult for enemy forces to reach without braving the river, this fort has been utilized for a multitude of unique strategies, such as regrouping and arms storage. However, Fort Delaware is most notorious for its role in the Civil War, where it primarily served as a prison for captured Confederate soldiers. As one might expect, conditions for these prisoners of war were atrocious. Many believe their suffering extended beyond the mortal plane, their anguish transcending to form a residual fog that entices visitors to share in their misery. At its peak, Fort Delaware held over 13,000 soldiers hostage. The wooden barracks were not built to sustain that number. As it was located on an island, procuring the necessary provisions to accommodate this many prisoners during wartime would have been difficult for even the most generous wardens. Sadly, for the Confederate soldiers forced to reside at Fort Delaware, their assigned wardens were cold and merciless. They entertained themselves by tormenting the hostages and would actively strive to worsen the already torturous conditions. There are many recounts of the wardens throwing live rats onto a horde of prisoners, laughing lightheartedly as the men below fought for their only chance at a hot meal. Along with malnutrition and dehydration, the captive soldiers fell victim to fatal diseases such as smallpox and scurvy. Of those 13,000, an estimated 2,700 perished within Fort Delaware. This number does not extend to include those who escaped, only to later succumb to illness or malnutrition. The conditions that these men faced were so soul-crushingly heinous that it's easy for paranormal investigators to see why so many spirits linger at Fort Delaware. They are unable to let go of the injustices committed against them in life. Because of this, Fort Delaware is considered a highly active site of supernatural activity. Numerous investigations have been conducted here including one performed by the Ghost Hunters. In their season three finale, they recorded a myriad of chilling encounters, including audio of what sounds like a ghostly cannon being fired and the inexplicable rattling of chains. On top of the acoustic recordings, they also documented visual proof of the supernatural, 
when the paranormal investigation team observed a strange phenomenon occurring on their thermal imaging cameras. They captured video of what appears to be a man peeking around the corner of a room. For those who want to experience Fort Delaware for themselves, the location offers a multitude of differing ghost tours. This includes a five-hour tour, complete with the supervision of professional paranormal investigators and access to necessary equipment such as EMFs, data recorders, and temperature sensors. This technology would be difficult and expensive for one to procure for personal use. So the tours conducted at Fort Delaware provide those with a keen interest in the supernatural realm the opportunity to record an unbelievable encounter.